students. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I hope you guys are all doing well. Uh, we are going to get started here with the ACT Comprehensive Review. Uh, this is going to be a review for students that are taking the June 2020 exam. But if you guys just have general questions, if, if your test got canceled or you're just trying to figure things out right now, we get it. We, it's, it's, it's crazy right now. And, and of course, uh, we're sorry for, for all of that. It's, it's just a it's a tough time right now if you guys are a, if you're a junior, especially if you're going to be a junior to be a senior. Uh, so we get it. So if you have any questions for us, please, please let us know. Um, we'd love to hear from you. If you guys uh, just comment in the sidebar uh, in the chat section, we'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, and again, happy to answer any general questions about the ACT, uh, but then we'll go through some things that, that we think will be helpful, not only to review for the June exam, but also to review for, uh, for the following July exam, which is just, it's going to be here before you know it. So again, guys, let us know if you're here. If you guys have any questions to start us off, please let us know. I'm going to post a few helpful resources um, right off the bat here. Including our, if you if your June test was canceled, I just want to remind everybody that we do have a we have a proctored practice test this Saturday, uh, and again, if you guys take a look at that link I just posted, which was on those ACT released exams, uh, proctored and I'm put proctored practice test Saturday, June thirteenth uh, at three forty five a.m. Here's the link to that. Okay, so all you guys have to do is click that link and then you guys can join. If you click the link that has those released exams, you guys can be ready to go on Saturday morning. And again, hopefully that will put you guys in a position not to have to, to uh, feel like you're behind for the July exam. So we highly encourage you guys to take that. Uh, if nothing else, just to try to simulate as much as possible what that June exam would have been like. You'll be amazed that while you don't get a chance to take the June exam officially, so you don't get an official score, if you're able to simulate a real test, like really trying to trying to practice the environment, not getting up in the middle of the test to go to the bathroom, that's stuff that won't happen. You won't be allowed to do that on the real thing. You know, trying to find a quiet place so your younger sibling isn't screaming in the background, that's not going to happen on the real thing either. So the, the more you can do that, the more you can try to simulate it like the real thing, the better you're going to do on, on the July test, right? And, and why not try to get ready for that? Given all of the circumstances that we get it, it's, it's not easy. But given all the circumstances that are surrounding that July exam, you should try to put in as much effort as you can and not, uh, not lose any preparation time over the course of the next several months or next several weeks rather, or next several months for that matter if, if uh, you know, you're going to take the September test as well. So guys, if you guys want to just uh, give me, can everybody give me a thumbs up in the, uh, in the chat feature? If you guys don't see the chat, it's probably because you do have to subscribe to the channel, I think, in order to see the chat. Maybe not. Don't, hold, don't take me for my word on that. I'm not entirely sure, but there should be a chat feature in the top right-hand corner, and we'd love to hear from you guys. If you guys have any questions for me, uh, let me know, and uh, yeah, and then we'll, again, we'll get started with, with, well, I'll just give you kind of a quick rundown of each section and, and what I think will be helpful if you're preparing for the June test, but also just going forward, uh, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be on that. And then the final thing, guys, again, before we get going here. Uh, is that we will also tomorrow night at the same time, but for less, uh, we'll have our ACT reading review. reading review. That'll be live streamed as well and free ACT reading review. Uh, so we encourage you guys to jump on that as well and to be a part of that. That'll just be talking if you guys are in like that 24, if you're trying to figure out how to get from that 22 to 26 range, you're, that's in the range you are for the reading section right now, and you just can't figure it out. Uh, we want to try to help you with that, and, and so hopefully, you know, drive that to go from a 24 to a 30 or, or even above that. Uh, we think we can give you some pretty helpful techniques and hints to, to get that going as well. Um, any case, guys, yeah, again, if you guys, are, if you guys feel pretty comfortable with this and, and uh, if you guys don't have any questions, that's great. If you do, please don't hesitate to give us a, a thumbs up or a, a chat in the, in the side feature. You guys don't have to... We're not, in, we're not YouTube influencers here. You guys don't have to give us a thumbs up on the video, but if you'd like to, that's fine. But really, we're just looking for you guys to be able to chat and, and ask questions of us, of me. And, uh, and then our tutors and teachers will also be responding to comments on this video uh, going forward. So uh, until Saturday, any future comments after the ones that I'm able to answer tonight, uh, we'll also be answering questions uh, throughout the rest of the week as you go into that June exam or if you come into the June proctored practice test with us. So again, guys, don't hesitate to uh, ask questions as we go through this. The final thing is, is I posted in the chat. Hopefully you guys can see that. I also posted that the link is posted below, but we're going to be talking about the 74F test tonight. 
Uh, so anytime we reference something, it'll be the 74F test. Uh, and 74F is the one that's officially released, just so we don't have any, any uh, concerns there. And you guys can all download that by just clicking the link that I posted. And we'll go from there. Hey guys, anybody, uh, anybody have any questions? Can everybody give me a good to go? If you guys are watching and you guys feel comfortable with everything we just discussed, can everybody give me a good to go uh, in the chat section? And, uh, and then we'll get started. I'll, I'll give you some thoughts on the English section. Uh, really, that's the one that we really feel comfortable with students really preparing a lot of it on their own. It's, it's just not very hard. Okay, but... Uh, but again, it does take some work. It's, it's not very hard if you put in a bunch of work and, and continue to work hard. It is pretty hard if you don't do that, so just keep that in mind. Okay, and one of the last things I want to bring up, guys, and this is just general strategy. When you're a student and you're taking this test, there's a lot of pressure on these tests now, unfortunately. Okay, there's a lot of pressure on these, and there really shouldn't be. But when I was a kid, I was a horrible student. So just to give you some perspective on all this, I was a horrible student and I wish I wasn't. That, that I thought it was, I was so cool. I wasn't cool. I was, I was not at all when I was a kid, but I thought I was. And what that led me to is to not do as well as I probably should have or, or work as hard as I needed to in school. And so I just want you guys to know that if, if you have a friend that's a great test taker but, but doesn't work very hard and, and you feel like you're struggling on this stuff, I cannot express to you enough. And I learned this late and I don't want you guys to have to go through that. I learned this too late. If you guys are in that position, I want you guys to know that your work ethic, anybody who has a strong work ethic will, will do better than anybody who's a great test taker 99.9% .9 of the time. And for anybody that's a great test taker that's watching this and rolling their eyes at that, it is just not true. And I know that because I didn't have a very good work ethic, but I was a good test taker as a kid. And when I was like 23, 24 years old, I was like, oh my, I'm like way behind in terms of how hard I need to work. Because ultimately, this stuff is used to get into college, and I think it is necessary because you will have to take these three-hour time tests if you go to American universities. Like a final is going to be three hours on a Saturday, similar to what you're going to see here. So I do think there's some necessity to it for college. But after college, your ability to stay focused and work hard really has nothing to do. So if you can do this on a test that you hate doing, then imagine when you get to something you love to do in, in life and you have that work ethic, you, your drive will way, way outweigh the students that are just naturally good test takers. Now, having said that, if I can get you to be a great natural test taker, and that's what we're going to be talking about tonight, and you're already a really hard worker, if you mesh those two things together, not only will that result in ridiculously high scores on an ACT or an SAT test, but it will also allow you guys to, to have kind of the combination of everything. Really strong decision making that comes with being a good test taker. Being an independent thinker and decision maker is something that comes with being a good test taker. But also having that work ethic and drive outside of the test, which really comes with things like the English section and, and whatnot. Uh, so I, again, I can't encourage you guys to, to continue to work hard and not to give up or not to feel down just because your, your results aren't there right now. They can get there if you stay positive. Okay, so the first thing, uh, the first thing that we're going to discuss tonight, and you guys can see this in the back of my screen. So if you guys haven't downloaded, so this is something that's really important for the, uh, for the English section in particular. If you guys haven't downloaded our Star U tutoring app, I've, I've included the links in the description below. But I think it's extremely important that you do that. So, so you download the app. It can be available on the App Store or Google Play. Or if you look in the comments below, you can find it at staru.co. But the reason I think it's so important is because we, we write, all of our teachers and tutors write these tutorials, these huge, massive tutorials that cover everything on the ACT and the SAT exam. And guess what? For free, the whole app download is free. You can log into the app and you can do those same exact lesson chapters that we find to be so crucial as you go through this test. Now, even more importantly, on the ACT English section and the SAT writing and language section, which is very comparable, this is extremely, extremely important because this is all work ethic. The English section is either the easiest section or just like kind of a middle level section, but this is the one, if you don't put in the work, it's, it's like whatever kind of section. If you put in the work, we've seen students that have started at 20s and 21s get to 36s, and I kid you not, on the English section, solely because they had a strong work ethic. It's talking about pronouns or subject-verb agreement is not very hard. That is that is like something that you would see. Uh, that is something that you would see in like sixth grade. You know, how I know that because anybody that's ever seen that Schoolhouse Rocks video, that's like conjunction, junction. What's your? F I'm not a great singer, right? Good thing I'm not doing singing for a profession. But if anybody's ever seen that, that conjunction, junction, what's your function video, 
That's the same stuff that's covered in the punctuation section on the ACT English test. And, and that's some of the hard, they, they deem those to be some of the hardest questions that you'll actually see in punctuation. So again, if you're just willing to read through this section and put in the time and go review that, okay, you guys will do extremely, extremely well on this test, like uh, on this section of the test. And, and again, one of the things that I want you guys to remember is that if you're doing that, if you're putting in that time, if you're doing those practice problems, you can track all of your results. And it's, again, particularly important for English because you don't really need anything more than this for the English section. You can come down here in the results page down in the bottom right corner and then click ACT. And now if you look at ACT English, it, it should be your goal. If you want to get a 36, and this is what we encourage of our students uh, in our classes as well, if you want to get a 36 on the English test, right, all you have to do is go down, right, you get subject verb agreement, punctuation, I'm five out of five on both of those. If I back it up here and I come back to the punctuation section, if I'm five out of five or 10 out of 10 or however many questions are associated with that chapter, if I'm 100% if I'm on all those, I'm pretty good and I, I'm feeling like I can get above at least a 30 on the English section. I can't stress that this is, this is the, the most important thing that you need to do because every section on the ACT is worth the same amount of points. Anytime we have stu students that are starting out, the, the first thing that you need to think about is the English section because if you have the time and you put in the work, it is so easy. Like, I can't stress this enough. And I don't say that just because I was born some, at, one, at one point and was like, well, I know all the grammar rules in the world. I don't. I, I love to read. So that stuff, that came naturally is because when you read a bunch and everybody always encourages you to read for the reading section, it's also extremely important for the English section because if you read a lot, every time you read a published article, somebody has gone through that and edited it for mistakes. So everything that you're reading is correct grammar 95% of the time. They'll make mistakes, but 95% of everything you read that's published has correct grammar. And so what that means is every time you read, you're ingraining that in your mind to the next time you read something that you recognize it right away. And so either a combination of that or a combination of if you don't love to read, you know, it's, it is what it is. You're, you're not going to do as well. Unfortunately, and this is just the truth, you're not going to do as well in the English and reading sections. And, and, I, and you gotta, you got to push yourself to do it. And I don't feel bad anymore because a couple of years ago, we had this one student who had tested at like a 20 overall in the ACT when she started. And I think she ended up with a 34, 35 overall on the overall. And I've never seen somebody work harder in my life. And what that prompted me to think is like, you know what, if somebody's going to come up with the excuse of I just don't like to read, then I don't know what to tell you. Because somebody out there, when you're graded on a national scale and you're thinking like, I got to be in the top 1% of all students, which is what a 34 is, having the excuse of, well, I just don't like to read is not going to get it done. And I know that because I've seen a student go from 20, which is the national average, that's the 50th percentile, to the 99th percentile. And I've never seen somebody with harder, with, with more work ethic ever. And she now had, she, oh, it opened every door, every scholarship door, every college door. And so again, I'm, I'm not as sensitive to the fact, and, and by the way, this was a student that, that, was on, that had been emailing us, just like, and this is why we started this YouTube channel. She hadn't taken one of our classes. She had watched our videos. She would email us regularly. And again, maybe she, maybe she was lying because we, you know, we didn't have a direct contact with her, but she suggested, everything that she suggested over the course of a year and a half would say that, that she improved this much, and it, it's every she had so many in-depth questions and she was constantly involved with videos like these live videos like this one or or emailing us about stuff and we're happy to answer any of those questions but it, it really is a it, I'm very passionate about this and when I see other students that are passionate about it asking the right questions and participating here I'm all for it and I'm willing to do more of these videos and I'm willing to be here for you guys but but it can't just be like oh what am I supposed to do now three days before the test if you're putting in the work and you have specific questions I absolutely love it and so this cumulative review tonight, I hope, is more of a review than anything. And if you guys are willing to do that and you have that work ethic, which I wish I would have had, and that's what I'm trying to communicate to you more than anything, if I would have had that when I was 16, my, 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 my goals may have been different. And you guys can all do that. And again, I, I, I implore you to have a better work ethic than, than be a great test taker because that's going to carry you way further in life. I learned that too late, and now I'm playing catch-up. You guys can do it at 16, 17, 18 years old. And you'll do great. So that's enough of that uh, that that uh, dialogue here. But let me just go back and see some of these questions. Uh, yeah, Shiri. So uh, Shiri, is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, Shiri. So if you guys see that, my score went up from 19 to 31 by watching your videos in here. Thank you so much. Hoping to increase my score on Saturday. Look, I didn't. I was speaking about somebody else, but but that's the that. Look at that. 
right there. So Sherry, if, if uh, that, that's it, that goes from, again, I don't mean to call you out here because I'm just so impressed by that type of work ethic. A 12 point increase from like around the national average to the top 5% of all students taking this test really doesn't help me. It doesn't help any students that used to be like me when I was 16 years old being like, well, I just don't like to do this. What's well, like the kid next to me, the, the kid next to you loves to do that. So, so, and that's where their score is going to increase. And that's what the work ethic you have to have. So I absolutely love that comment. That's a great one to start. Okay, let's see. You got 30 on the 18th of February, and I really want to improve reading, science, and master math. Give me tips. It doesn't take me tests in July. Yep, we're going to talk about reading tonight. Uh, yep, guys, we're going to talk about reading and science tonight, particularly reading. Uh, and again, if you guys have any questions about reading, particularly this year, if it looks like uh, you got a 27 on it, so you just typed, if you got a 27 on reading, I encourage you to look at the video tomorrow because the video tomorrow is really going to be talking a lot about how you can be a really great test taker. Today we're going to do a lot of review, but the re reading review tomorrow should be really, really helpful um, in terms of how to be a great test taker. And you can apply it to other sections, but the reading test, because of the timing aspect of it, is one that students, that, that the, what we'll talk about, and we'll talk a little bit about it tonight too, but it, it's the one place that I had such a major advantage over everybody else because I didn't have that strong of a work ethic, but I did love to read. Uh, it, it allowed me to, to stay calm, and we'll talk again about that tonight. But in any case, guys, my, my first recommendation, we're not going to talk about English tonight too much because I really do believe that it's something that everybody can do on their own. It, these concepts are just not very hard. It's going to take a little bit of work, but uh, I really think that you guys can do this on your own. So my recommendation for the English section would be to, as much as you can, be doing these practice chapters in our Star U app. Uh, it covers all of the it covers 99% of the questions that you guys will see on the English section. And then just track your results in the bottom right hand corner and make sure that when you click English here, if you have all of the chapters filled out and they're all five of five, then you're probably testing in the top 5% on the English test. And that's really, again, because of the way that the English test is structured and formatted, that's really the primary thought and concern on that one. Is that cool? Guys, can you give me a thumbs up if all that makes sense? Just thumbs up if, if, uh, if all that stuff makes sense. Okay. Yeah, guys, uh, we'll talk about reading. Yeah, so StarU is free, by the way, too, guys. Yeah, StarU, it's downloaded in the App Store, Google Play. We've uh, we basically put we're all, 95% of the content, right, is, is right here. We've, we've, all of our tutors and teachers edit and write this material. It's all in the app. You guys can, can memorize that. So I encourage you to do it. And that's why we wanted you guys, again, I'm very passionate about this stuff. If it means that you guys are going to work really hard and, and we can provide the resources for you guys to do that, then of course I want to provide those. So uh, yeah, check it out. Okay, guys, so let's talk about, it looks like a lot of students have questions about the reading section first. So, so math, I think there's some strategies that we want to discuss by, by, certainly by the end of this video and by the time we're done tonight. But uh, let's, start with the, let's start with the reading test first because I really do think that it's important for you guys to see reading in, in kind of a different light. Uh, because it can be can be overwhelming. So let me switch off here real quick. So I posted this uh, before, guys, but we're going to work out of the 74F test. You guys will see that we were doing a video previously. We'll do also be working. Okay, so he, here's the way that I would strategize, or he, here's how I would take a reading test. Let me see which... Uh, you know, let's, let's go to the passage. So I'm looking at passage number three. This is 74F, passage number three. And guys, honestly, here's the best way to prepare for reading. And it, it's not going to sound great. I promise you, it's, first of all, reading more, as I said, reading more will definitely help you. There's no question about that. Reading more will definitely help you. Um, but let's try not to look at the answer choices. Here, let me, let me switch off just so you guys can't see all these before we get started here. So even if you guys have seen this test before, and I'm sure some of you guys have, I'm less concerned about that and more concerned about whether or not you guys are preparing correctly for the reading test. And again, there, there's a lot of thought about like what's the best strategy for reading? Should I skim the passages? Generally speaking, at, at every level of the reading test, there's really no question that you should read all of the passage. We see students that sometimes will post like, well, I just skimmed, or I, I went to the questions first and went back and forth. It, those students that can get a 36 that way or could easily get a 36 by just reading everything too. So th that's not a great example. The, the thing about reading the passage as a whole and being better at comprehending the reading section, uh, the, the, the key to it is that when you do that, 
your reading timing will get better as you read more. So by doing this and focusing on comprehension and accuracy, you will do extremely well on the reading test. And so here's what I would do. And again, we'll go into more depth on this tomorrow night. I'll, I'm going to show everybody how you can go from a 24 to a 30 on the reading test. But what I'd like everybody to do is if you guys have the 74F test pulled up, and can everybody just confirm, just say good to go, if you guys have the 74F reading test pulled up. Uh, and more specifically, can you guys tell me if you have passage number three? So guys, we're on 74F. You see this in the background of my screen. Passage three. And here's how I would recommend preparing for this. I would say that you guys should all practice by reading the entire passage. Read. Okay. And for the time being, I think you should give yourself 13 minutes to do it. And I'm going to put the timer up because we're going to do this tonight together. I'm going to put the timer up in the background, but I want you guys to give yourself 13 minutes to complete this. Okay, and as you read, I want you guys to be focused on, on imp, uh, what the general main idea is and how each paragraph, you, they hear about mapping out the passage. Remember, guys, this is only 85 total lines, and in reality, it's, it's really just like 40 lines if you look at like a Word document because it's double space. We're talking about 40 lines. And so what ends up happening is that students get so overwhelmed by the reading section that it's just like, oh my God, I can't answer this. Or I can't read this, I'm running out of time, all that kind of stuff. When in reality, if you guys just stay focused all the way through, right, and just read it to read, there's not that much text. It's just that when we start thinking about like, what's my time, where am I, what am I getting, if I don't get a 30, then I'm a failure and I'm not getting into the school, my dream school, right? If I don't get a 30 on this reading section because I always do poorly on it. All that stuff creeps into your mind, and instead of focusing on what's actually you're comprehending, you're focused on everything else. And I don't want you to do that because the moment that you get confidence on the reading test, most people don't know this, but the reading test is written at an eighth grade reading level. Every reading passage is written at an eighth grade reading level. They'll have eighth graders read through this stuff. So if you can get that, if you can get that confidence up and you really read and read to focus, right? You're focused and you're reading for comprehension. You'll be amazed at how quickly you can answer the questions. And for anybody who's seen our past videos of me taking these tests, I feel very comfortable and confident in saying that I will almost never go below a 35 maybe on the reading test, depending on how I'm feeling on a given day. Because Just because I feel confident. I know that what I'm reading is not very hard. And if I get behind a little bit on one passage, I can always catch up on another. And it's, lo and behold, it works almost every time. So what I have you guys do is you look at the main idea. Yeah, it works from a 30 too, guys. Yeah, so this works absolutely. If you're going from a 30 to a 36, this is how I used to take the test. I would read everything. And, and I'm going to tell you guys right before you start reading this, and then we'll set the timer and you guys will read it and, and write down your main idea and tone. When I used to take this test, I was so independent as a kid. So, so I was so independent that I never did my work and I turned in everything late. And I was a horrible student, but I was so independent that no matter what somebody told me to do, like on this reading test, I would just do it my way. And because I liked to read, that this helped me to really read through it. And then I was pretty confident that when I got to the questions, and for those again that have watched our videos in the past, you guys know that I answer a lot of those questions without ever going back to the passage because I understand that I'm reading 40 lines of eighth grade text. It's like I, I should be able to answer all of these questions if I'm really focused on reading and not focused on all the other things that go into an exam like this. Okay, and so what I want you guys to do is when I put the timer up in 13 minutes, okay, I want you guys to, to read through it and annotate how you'd normally annotate it. Be diligent with your reading. And then when you're done, I want you guys to come up with one to two sentences. And this is how you can prepare. It'll, it'll be helpful for Saturday if you're taking the June exam, but it'll be very helpful for the July exam. One to two sentences, and then I want you guys to focus on the tone. And I just want you to write down the positive, positive, negative, okay, or neutral tone. That's it. Positive, negative, or neutral, and that's it. One to two sentences, positive, negative, or neutral. And then once you've done that, I actually want you to write it on the sheet or write it in your notes. Once you do that, okay, I want you guys to go back. And I want you to start answering the questions and I want you, who cares what happens tonight? I just want you to be really confident that you read it and you read it to comprehend. There's no pressure tonight. I'm even giving you guys four extra minutes from what you normally get per passage. I want you to write down the main idea and the tone. You can absolutely refer back to those. But I want you to only go back to the passage if you truly don't remember what was said at that time. If they give you line numbers, that's okay to glance back and just try to recall what that paragraph was talking about. 
but I want you to be really confident with what you read. Okay, are all the eight, so the SAT reading passages are much harder. So I think that's what, yeah, are the SAT reading passages? The SAT reading passages are at a much higher level. That's more like a high school, like 10th, 11th grade level. You'll see those, some, some of those same passages and essays show up in U.S. history classes, AP U.S. histories even. So those are much harder on the SAT. So the reading section on the SAT, we take those, we, we strategize a little bit differently. But for the most part, uh, this is how you should definitely prepare for the reading test. It works at every level. Again, during the reading review tomorrow night, we'll go into more depth on this. And I'm actually going to take a, a test that, to show what it looks like to get a 20, go from a 24 to a 30. But for right now, guys, this is what I want you guys to do. I'm going to pull up the timer in the background of my screen here. I'm going to give you guys 13 minutes. And again, what I want you guys to be focused on is not whether or not... Give me one sec here. Not whether or not you, you should finish with timing. I just want you to do these tasks, main idea, tone... And then when you go through it, if you miss a lot of questions here with all of this extra time with no pressure, this isn't a timing issue. So you really shouldn't be focused on timing even beyond what you talk about tonight. It's a comprehension issue. Because if we give four extra minutes or even if you take this untimed and you're still missing three or four questions, it's got to be a real focus to make sure you're reading what, what you need to and underlining important things. And, and that comes with reading more and it comes with more practice. Okay, so in any case, guys, again, it's on the background of my screen. Now you guys will see the timer for 13 minutes. Okay, I'm going to set the timer. And even if you guys have read this passage before, I don't care. That's fine. Write down the main idea. Write down the tone. And then I want you guys to answer the questions and try to take all 13 minutes to do this. Okay, so 13 minutes on the clock and your time starts now. Good luck, guys. See how you do. If you guys finish, when you finish, uh, let us know. Let me know how you, how you felt going through this. Just uh, type it in the answer key, or uh, rather in the chat here. Let me know how you felt, and then we'll uh, we'll further discuss. Guys, if you have any other questions too, if, if you're not as focused on the reading test but you're still watching, if you are focused, please do this exercise. It will be so helpful, I promise. If you're not as focused on the reading and you're just waiting for other parts of the video tonight, you guys can absolutely type questions and I'll just respond via chat so, so not to distract those that are taking the reading section right now, but I can just chat with you guys too. So feel free to ask questions throughout if we're doing these exercises. I'll be sitting here.
one other thing to mention here too, guys, as you guys you know read through this passage, is that it can also it's never going to be positive and negative, but it could be positive and neutral or negative and neutral, so with the tone. So so feel free to classify it as as either positive or positive neutral or negative negative neutral. Um, either one of those works, but just just so you guys keep that in mind, just in case you don't think this is overly positive or old, overly negative.
You guys are doing great. About three and a half minutes left. Three and a half minutes. Stay focused. Stay focused. Hey guys, about 19 seconds left. You guys are doing great. And then guys, when you stop, okay, time's up here. Okay, so when you guys stop, here's what I want you to recognize. First, I want to hear how you guys felt, okay? So please don't hesitate to tell me how you guys felt about those. And then what I'd like you to do, what I'd like you to do is to grade your own test. So Going right here. Okay, so grade those 10 questions. And again, the thing, I, I wanna hear how you guys felt, and, and the thing that you need to ask yourself is, did I, uh, did I, did I answer, did I, if I got nine out of 10 or 10 out of 10, that's awesome, and you, and you used the strategy really well, but if you didn't, and you got like seven out of 10, right, then this is not a timing thing. And so while this isn't particularly effective for, for Saturday, right, if you're taking, you can definitely improve upon this by the July test for sure. So if you got seven out of 10, the thing that you wanna be focused on more than anything else is on comprehension and you need to completely take the time away from the test. How did everybody do though? If you guys look at this, did anybody get 10 out of 10 as they went through, this, went through the passage? Did anybody refer back to their main idea and their tone? Did, did you guys use those, those hopefully helpful hints to get you through this passage? Did 
you guys do? Anybody have a chance to take this? Just so we can get some feedback. Anybody have a thoughts, questions, concerns as you guys go through this? Did anybody actually read the whole passage and, and do the exercise? Because again, guys, even if you guys, and, and, and I know that the chat's delayed here a bit, but, but uh, even if you guys have seen this passage before, it doesn't really matter with the, the premise of how I want you to study. This is obviously not going to be the same thing as when you have to take the, take the real test and you, you wouldn't have seen the passage before. But what I want you, want you to recognize is that these passages are easy enough that even if you haven't seen the passage before, it doesn't really matter. Right? You, guys can, you guys can work through these because the passages on the ACT reading section are not very hard. But it does take some work, especially if you don't, if you don't naturally love to read. That, that's going to be an issue and you've you got to just push through that. Okay, I had some I had some advantages as a test taker when I was a kid. Namely, I still love to read, and I loved to read when I was a kid. And my mom was a math teacher, so while I didn't really pay attention, didn't listen to her, she kind of made it so that I, my life was going to be miserable if I didn't at least know some things about algebra two. And so that really helped me on something like this. But again, it didn't it didn't apply enough to the rest of my life that when I turned twenty three, I was like, oh my god, there's a lot of really hardworking people out there that also do really well on tests like this, or or even if they don't, they, they are really established and work really hard, and that's going to be an issue, right? If I don't, if I don't start working hard, that's going to be a problem, and, and that's what I want you guys to remember. Okay, so again, that was an exercise. Is everybody good to go on the reading section? So, so I want to make sure that we move on and have time for talking about science and math as well. We'll talk about reading tomorrow in, in much more depth, but is, can everybody just give me a good to go if you guys, want to, if you guys are good to move on to the science section? Just in terms of how that strategy works and how you can continue to improve. I don't want this to be like an all-in, all-encompassing thing tonight just because there's not enough time. But, uh, but hopefully that gave you guys a sense as to how I would prepare for the reading section. And again, what we're going to talk about tomorrow night is that if, you, or if you're able to be great at comprehension but you're a slow reader, that doesn't really matter when going from like a, okay, when going to a, say like a, what? A 30, if you're looking to get a 30 on that reading section, that doesn't matter because as we'll talk about tomorrow night, this is going to be a, this is going to be very important for the comprehension aspect of this. Yeah, if you just need to practice more, guys, that's totally fine. Again, if you just need to practice more, don't do it with time initially. Actually, that's a great comment. And again, that, that shows me, if, if with comments like I just need to practice more shows me, especially if you're actually willing to go and do it. Because I used to say that to myself and then I would never do it, which was a problem for me. Yeah, but actually, if you're willing to go do it and go put in the time and the practice, that's a very self-aware comment. Like, man, I just need to practice more. I, that, that's a great comment because if you actually go put in the time, you're going to find like, yeah, if I just practice more, this is not very hard. Okay, so that's, that's a phenomenal comment. So keep, uh, keep it up. Yeah, guys, the practice problems in our books we actually wrote. Uh, so our practice problems, if you guys see that on the app, it's a good question. All of our teachers and tutors write those practice problems. So I really believe that... Uh, you know, again, I'm certainly biased towards what we're doing here and, and what we have with the app. But, but uh, like, if you look at Princeton Review, I used to work at Kaplan. If you look at Princeton Review, it's it's uh, like those are just being written by there. There's feedback, and there's there's uh, you know, there's certainly people that that know these tests really well that give feedback for the actual exam. But but largely, the questions themselves are not being analyzed and written by current teachers and tutors, and that's something we're very proud of. So everything you see in the app or in our books. Uh, is written by all of us, and we edited it based on, I mean, you guys have seen these videos of me taking the test. We edit those books based on anything new that we're seeing coming out on, on the last, on the most recently released tests. So it's a good question on that, too. Okay, so, yeah, again, I'm, I'm probably biased to that, so take that with a grain of salt if you want. But uh, that's how we're getting our problems, is we're just writing them based on what we're seeing on real tests. And so I think they're pretty... Pretty accurate uh, in terms of additional practice problems. I don't think anything can equate to the real test and just how it's laid out. So I would definitely start with those. But one of the things we're really excited about is we're actually developing something for the app right now that's going to be like a virtual bubble sheet. So you can fill in your answers and then it will give you suggested practice problems. 
So we'll, we have, as you guys have seen from those advanced score reports that we have on the website that I've, that I've posted before, uh, you'll basically just have that within the app and you can fill out your bubble sheet. It's just a virtual bubble sheet instead of writing it down, similar to what you see on the computer-based test. And uh, after you're done, it immediately scores your every ACT and SAT exam. It'll score it, uh, the real ones, the, the real ones that have been recently released. And it will give you 15 suggested practice lessons over the course of all four sections. So again, we're really excited about that. That hopefully will be released here in the next month or so. Uh, but I think it's going to be a pretty big game changer in terms of people that are students that are you know willing to put in the time and willing to self-study. Okay, enough of that though. Great question. Gave me a chance to to uh, brag a little bit about some of the stuff that we're doing, and uh, so I appreciate that on that level. Yeah, so that, this is going to be so. Yeah, uh, I'll just call you Sunny because I don't know your name, but but uh, Sunny, yeah, that's that's a great. Uh, that's a great way to do it. I mean, the, the best way to practice for this, guys, is to take a practice test, really look at your mistakes, and that's where those advanced score reports hopefully come in on our website, and, and those are listed in the comments section below. If you plug in your answers to those advanced score reports, it tells you exactly what types of questions you're missing. So from an efficiency standpoint, don't be the person that's just taking practice test after practice test after practice test. Eventually, you plateau on that method, and you just get overwhelmed and tired of doing them. If you're just taking one a week or one every other week, but then you're really diligently going back and doing test corrections and really trying to learn from, from your mistakes, it, this test is a breeze. It really is because the content is just not very hard. It's just not. I don't know what else to say. Like even on the math section, which the ACT math is by far the hardest section of these four, uh, even on ACT math, like it only goes up to the very beginning of pre-calculus, you know, the, from a concept standpoint. So that's just my recommendation. I think that's a great strategy. So guys, let's jump into the, the science section a bit here, just because I want to I want to show you guys a few things. And, and again, for those that have watched the videos, this is going to feel like a somewhat of a repetitive exercise potentially. But I just want to show you guys the importance of uh, of really strategizing on science, because I can be the first to admit that I have no idea. Okay, I have no idea anything about science. I took uh, this is another good example of how how poor of a student I was. I took all the AP classes just because that's what people told me to do. I have no idea. I have no idea. I wasn't. I didn't pay attention. I was just thought I was way too cool for school, and that that stinks in a lot of ways. But for the science section of this test, it really doesn't matter. And that's that's another bit major benefit that I had. So again, guys, the benefit that I had when I was a kid, and the reason that I scored well on this when I was a kid and can do it now, is because I just don't care. That's a huge problem, and I'm trying to work on that. So I'm I, I'm way over here on the test taking ability thing. And, and way down here on the work ethic thing, I'm, I don't want to be this far over. I want to be somewhere in the middle here because if, if you're willing to do that, you can, you can do a lot of great things. And being a great test taker largely comes from just not caring. And that's really where this science strategy, for those that have watched our previous videos, has come from. Is when I was a kid taking the science test, I, if I didn't see something, instead of being the student that's, that goes into the test being like, I got to get a 36, I got to get a 36 or I'm a failure. I went into the test without a thought in the world about tomorrow or the next day or what I was doing for college. And again, that's a major problem in the long run. That's not the way that you want to approach this. But on a test like this, if I saw, because I was so independent and, and just so, I don't even know what you'd call me back then, but, it, but it, if, I, if I saw a question that I didn't know how to do, I'd be like, no, nope, I'm not doing that today. Right? Ah, that's out. And so when you take that pressure off, when there is no stress, you're able to look at a lot of these questions. And again, because I had some benefits of that I loved to read and my mom was a math teacher as a kid, that helped me. So I had some, some strategic advantages that you guys, that, that you might have to work through if your mom's not a math teacher, and if you don't love to read, but you guys can do it. And then when you get to this, if you really just kind of sit back and you're like, you know what, whatever happens, happens. College is kind of a, it's a toss up anyway. I mean, we've seen students get 30s and get into, we had a student last year that got the 30 and got into Brown. And we had a student that got a 36 and didn't get any of the top of their school. So it's like, you know, it, you just have to be in the mix. That's what this test is really about now is, is it puts you in the mix. And so it doesn't disqualify you from going to one of these schools. They like to see like, okay, this person has a test score. That's great. Now what else do they have? And the, and the test really isn't a plus anymore unless you do get like a 35, 36. I think then it becomes a plus in some ways. But, but anywhere from like a 29 to a 34 in our experience has, has meant for these top schools, no matter, we had a student that got into NYU with a 27, despite that being a lot lower than their middle 50% or what they report, um, you know, it, it really comes down to a lot of other things, but this kind of puts you in the mix is the best way to describe it. And so when you go into this test and you don't take that pressure, you don't have that pressure of like, if I don't do this, then I'm a failure and, and everybody hates me, right? I never win with that. And so when I saw questions like these on the science test, 
the strategy that you've seen in our previous videos is largely based on how I took this as a kid, which is just like, whatever happens, happens today. Like, at least I'm going to be out of here and I can go to McDonald's after this, right? And I get a, and I'll get a, I'll get a Big Mac and life's back to normal, right? Because when you go into the test on a Saturday morning, the world doesn't stop turning. And when you come out at 1230, you're the same person. If you guys can recognize that and then be, and put all the hard work in outside of these tests, then when you go in, you have as much confidence as you've, you've ever had. And you're just like, oh yeah, this is just, uh, I know my strategy for that, right? And, and that's how I want you guys to think about this. Okay, so without further ado, let's talk about science. So I'm on the 74F science test, uh, and again, this is where it comes. I, so I, I ask you guys, and, and this is where I think taking the timing aspect and why I always encourage that, taking the timing aspect of this is so important, taking it out of the equation. Guys, do you think that I have any idea what Blatella Germanica is? Like we see all these students, and this is just my opinion, do you think I have any idea what a species, how that relates to a species of cockroach? Or what types of foods they like to eat, how it relates to carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, water. That, that's something that I briefly remember as I was probably staring out the window at AP Bio. Right? That's something I very briefly remember them talking about. And so again, when you guys are looking at questions like this, it's my opinion, and this is different for everybody, but sometimes, sometimes you see students that want to skim or really read in depth. If that takes the pressure off you, that's fine. But in, in my opinion, what ends up happening for most students, not all, some do release that pressure when they get a chance to read what's going on. But in my opinion, a lot of times it just adds to it. You're like, well, what's going on with Blatella Germanica? What did I miss in school with that? Right? Instead of just looking at, like, if I look at question number one, I know right away it's going to be a very straightforward question because it begins with these words, according to. So if you ever see according to, okay, according to or based on in a question, which by the way, that's like 30, that's like let's say 27 out of 40 of the science questions. Those questions are wildly easy. They just are. And for those that have watched like that BO4 science video that we filmed, that was the first time I'd seen the BO4 test. And when I sat down and looked at that science section for the first time, that first passage on the BO4 test, which is the hardest science test they've ever released, I looked at the first passage and I was like, this is gonna be too much. Like I was already overwhelmed and so I just skipped the first passage not knowing what was going to come. But guess what? Four out of the next five passages were wildly easy. And then I had time at the end to go back to the first passage when I wasn't so stressed, when I wasn't so feeling so much pressure because I knew I'd already answered a lot of questions correctly at that point. Okay, and, and I know that I answered a lot of them because look at this. According to figure one, so you want to pay attention to according to and then figure one, and we're looking at four hours, was closest to. So we go to, right? Uh, which the flying was closest to which the flying values? Wait, uh, cheese, right? Sorry, cheese is another important one. So without knowing anything about what's going on in this experiment, I see that cheese, and I'm looking at the four hours in figure one, and I come back up here, and it looks like it's at about 185. That's it. Right? Did I know anything about Bilatella Germanica to answer that question? Nope. Sometimes, occasionally, they'll put in based on questions that are buried, right? But it's still a based on question. Based on figure one, which four foods should the company place in the trap to maximize the chance of capturing these? Okay, so look, it says massive food remaining, which means that if it says massive food remaining, that means that, that they're, they're coming in to eat this food, right? And it looks like, for whatever reason, these from the cockroaches, right, they love, uh, they love these peanuts, apparently. So I think J is probably the right answer there. Now, again, I've seen this test before. You guys have seen the video, but the first time we took this, the first time I took it, I hadn't seen it before. And, and again, it, it has nothing to do, if you maximize your strategy here and just look for these types of questions, they're not all going to be like this, but there's a lot of them that are. Look at this one, right? I'm, I don't even care about these, other, these three questions right now because right now I've probably taken 15, 20 seconds to answer those first two, and now I find based on table one, 200 milligrams, four foods, was placed in the box, water uh, accounted for more than 100 milligrams of the mass of which of the foods. Okay, so table one, 200 milligrams. Uh, table one, 200 milligrams. Uh, sorry, wait, I wasn't, now I'm not, I was looking at the comment there. 200 milligrams each of the four foods are placed in the box, water accounted for more than 100 milligrams of the mass of which of the foods. Uh, okay, so let's see. This is percent by mass. And so, yeah, so right here, oh no, wait, water. Yeah, water is cat food, right? Because it's 66.2% of, uh, of the total mass, percent by mass. So it's got to be cat food. 
Wait, is that different? Than... Oh yeah, and uh, and ham. I got ahead of myself, but there wasn't a, just a cat food option. Although I probably would have made a simple mistake there if there was. So be careful. So it's got to be cat food and ham only. Gee. And again, guys, as you work uh, as you work through this, if you guys work through this, uh, Sonny, yeah, my, my recommendation would not be to necessarily move on to really old tests because the, the science test I think has gotten harder in the last couple of years. The score, the scales certainly reflect that. If you go back and look at all the tests that they've released. The scales reflect the science that has gotten harder in the last couple of years. So my recommendation would definitely be to, to look at tests you've already taken. But my strategy here, I've seen the 74F test now, but it doesn't, I, I don't remember enough of this. Like you briefly kind of think about it. I remember, you, you briefly remember kind of looking at this stuff, but you don't remember it that well. And again, if you're just focused on, on trying to answer a lot of the easiest questions first, you're going to be amazed at how well you can do on the test. If anybody watched our video a couple weeks ago, I took the A11 test live, which was very tiring. I, I applaud all you guys because I forgot. That was the first time I'd taken the full, like all the way through test, not getting up or anything. And that was hard, really hard. So I applaud you guys. And I'm getting older, so got to work on that stamina and the endurance. But I applaud you guys. But you can see that at the end of the science test, you start to get overwhelmed. You start to feel out of it. And so that's where I really want you guys to work on the strategy. So, so looking at this test you've already seen before, doesn't take away from the fact that really what we're trying to do here is we're going to point out all of the uh, we're going to point out all of the easiest question types, right? So we see here like based on student ones, this is that conflicting viewpoints passage which deals with a lot more reading. You might think about skipping that one if you don't love to read to find some easier questions, right? But like even these, I don't love any of these. And then you can see like this was from the last time we took it, but like this question here, passage number four, all of a sudden gets a lot easier. Yeah, so right, the, uh, yeah, the brain was hurting the first time you took it. I'm telling you, I feel like taking a nap. Like four and a half hours to be that focused is, is so ridiculous. And that's why I encourage you guys, like after you're done with the ACT, the best thing I had going for me when I was a kid was just like, whatever, right? And I'd be like, anytime somebody asked me, I'd be like, I don't know, I did. Who, who cares? Let's go get, you know, let's go get some food or whatever. But your brain is done after three and a half, four hours of just solid testing. That stinks. Right? And don't, don't think that it's anything different. I do this every day for a living and I still think it stinks. Right? So, so give yourself some credit as you guys take this stuff. Don't put so much pressure on yourself. Okay? And if you're, again, if you're willing to put in the work, if I didn't have some certain things line up in terms of, my, again, my mom being a math teacher and loving to read, if those two things didn't line up like they did for me, I would have been horrible at this because I wouldn't have put in the time. The work ethic has to happen outside of the test. And then when you go into the test, it, it just is what it is. Your life is not going to, trust me when I say this, that, that your life is not going to be any different if, if, you know, if something doesn't work out exactly how you planned it in your head. I, I promise you. You might have to make some, some different adjustments in your life like I did. I had to figure out that you had to work hard when I was 23 and, and really try to put all my effort and potential into stuff. But other than that, it's like give it your best shot. If you're putting in the time, you're, you have a great work ethic already, that's going to outweigh being a great test taker. And I can say that from personal accountability. Okay, that's going to outweigh being a great test taker by like a million miles. So don't, don't put so much pressure on yourself. You guys are doing great. I mean, in the comments tonight, I, just, I can't tell you how impressed I am with you guys and, and working through this. So does everybody, is everybody good to go with that science concept that, that taking these untimed and trying to identify easy questions, right? This didn't just happen for me. I, I didn't wake up one day when I was a kid or when I was born and it was just like, you know what? I bet those according to passages are really, really easy. Right, I, that that's not what happens. And, and to improve your science test, you got to go through and try to identify these on your own. Okay, because I'm ultimately who has to take the test? You do, right? So you have to be there and be like, okay, according to Figure Two, right? That's something that seems pot, seems uh, important based on what Chase said. Maximum positive value for VS, right? Okay, so let's look at Figure Two. You have it circled. Possible value for VS. Be careful. So that's the dotted line. Looks like it's right up here. Right, and we're looking for the maximum possible value of VS, and we're in volts because it gives us volts in the answer choices with somewhere like around, yeah, like right at 250. Right? Yeah, was that out, what outside knowledge? Is that what you're asking for the science test? Okay, yeah, perfect. Yeah, outside knowledge of the science test. Honestly, guys, I'd say there's probably uh, it, the the thing that I I get I get. It's tricky with the science test, to be honest. There, there are certain things that we've written down. If you look at the science introduction on our app, I, I even forget because it's like, if you know of like basic kind of, um, you know, like what molecular mass is for chemistry, 
if you know generally like what lipids are, what fats, you know, fats versus lipids versus proteins. No, I think fats are lipids, right? I don't even know. I'm getting confused. Okay, but it, there, there's a list in that star. You, if you go into the science introduction, there's a list of general topics that you should probably be familiar with. But generally, again, unless you're already testing in like the 30, if you are, if you're already testing in like the 29 to 31 range for science, then I think it is appropriate to go back and start to review, to, to think about what you might need to know for science knowledge. But until you get to that point, you're just putting more pressure on what could be for science knowledge. And ultimately, science knowledge questions account for five out of 40 questions. Okay, there's five out of 40 that are science knowledge. Okay, and then there's 20, like I said, 27, depending on 27 out of 40 for just very direct, straightforward questions. And then there's probably like, yeah, like eight out of, eight out of 40 that are uh, like hypotheticals. So they're not science knowledge. You don't need to know anything about the experiment beforehand, but it's like suggesting something would happen. Like, okay, based on what you see in the experiment, you might have to extrapolate out. And so that's probably about eight out of 10. And somewhere, I would say the majority of these questions would be level three out of three questions, according to the ACT. These would all be level one. And these would be somewhere between, yeah, one and three, depending on. But again, if every question is worth the same amount of points, focus on these first. And then if you are, I'd focus on how to master these hypotheticals and then turn your attention because that's the only difference between science knowledge and no science knowledge. If I got to 35 questions and I had no idea what any of the science knowledge questions were asking and I just guessed the same letter straight down, and you guys have seen this in some of these videos, if I just guess the same letter straight down, I'm gonna and, and based on our guessing technique for those who have seen our guessing video, I'm gonna probably get two out of two out of those ten right, and you get 37 out of 40. Now on this test, this has a ridiculously bad scale for students. Okay, so I think you end up with like a 31 or a 30 on this test, which is terrible. But on the BO4 test, if you were to do this and completely skip those science knowledge questions, you would still get 37 out of 40. On the BO4 test, it was a 36. Okay, so somewhere in there is generally the average. So I'd say 37 out of 40, somewhere like around 32, 33, 34 generally. Okay, guys, can everybody give me a good to go if you guys feel comfortable moving on from science? Or if you don't, if you, if you want to keep talking about science and asking questions, please, please don't hesitate to do that. I'm, I'm happy to continue to answer these. I just want to make sure that, that we have enough time to cover the math section as well and then answer any general questions you guys have at the end of the test, uh, particularly for those that are taking... Uh, for those that are taking the test on Saturday. With that in mind, good to go, everybody hanging in there. Okay, yeah, guys, with that in mind, I'm going to scroll up here to the math section and just show you guys hopefully a helpful technique that can be helpful for the math section. Now, remember that this this uh, this test that I'm using is the officially released one, so they don't give you a ton of form. They don't give you a ton of uh, they don't give you a ton of space on this test. Yeah, answer easy is first, guys. I mean, it, it really comes down to that, right? If you can identify those easy ones on an untimed test so that you're really familiar with what easy questions look like on science, uh, they, coming from somebody who knows, who truly knows the basics, the true basics of science, and that's about it. I, if, for those that have watched our previous videos, particularly the BO4 video, that, that one was one that was supposed to be really hard. It's the hardest science test ever administered, and I felt better on that one than I did on this 74F test solely because it was one passage. And I, and I truly believe, guys, if you look at the BO4 test, I think the ACT was saying something with that. If you guys look at the BO4 science test, and I, I mentioned this in the BO4 science video, if you guys look at that test, I think the ACT was saying, who's going to skip this first passage? I really believe that. I really think in their minds they were saying, who, who has the capabilities to skip this first passage? Because the first passage was so much harder than the rest. And, and, you know, if, if you're willing to skip the first passage, then it's going to be a really easy test. But most students are locked up in that moment. And instead of skipping, they, they want to try to answer because that's how they've always taken the test. 
And, and that's, you know, again, counterproductive to, to the way that you want to approach that section of the exam. Okay. So guys, again, the last thing we'll talk about here, and, and we don't necessarily need to go for the full two hours, but I, we always leave it open for that. The last thing we want to talk about is the math section, and, and math is very similar to the science section. Uh, with science, right, we're trying to, we're, we're identifying, let's try to find the easiest questions first. The benefit of the math section is that you know that most of the easy questions are going to come early, right? So pass, we, we, for those who watch our other videos, you have pass one, pass two, pass three. And guys, when I, when I take this exam, I, at this point, I don't think about these past one, past two, past three. But the reason we designed this for the math and the science test were to try to give you guys a, a, a reason to be good at skipping questions. So when I take these exams now, like if you guys have seen me, I'm not, I'm not thinking, I'm not thinking um, on the top of my head. I'm not, off the top of my head, I'm not just like, okay, this is past one question. Answer it, Chase. Right? That's not how I'm going through these exams. But what it is helping me with is this ability to skip questions. And because I was really good at that as a kid, this is why we've tried to develop this. I thought about this for a long time, about what made it e what made the math test easier for me. And realistically, the, the benefit that I had was that I always knew, like in school too, I always knew what it took to get the minimum. Like if I needed to get an A minus or I was at a C plus or a B plus and I needed to get to an A minus or a B minus, I always knew what the minimum was to get the absolute lowest score possible to be up in like the upper echelon or the next rung up, right? So, so that's what helped me on a test like this. Rather than approaching an exam, a, a math exam like this, thinking like, oh, I got to get 60 questions right, which is how we're all taught to think because we always learn in school 100% equals A plus, 90% equals A minus. I knew from a really young age because I was so adamant about doing the absolute minimum to get the, the next rung up. I knew at a young age that like, if I got 55 out of 60 questions right, I would get a 34 on the math test. And I knew that that was in the top 1% of students. But I also knew that in school, 55 out of 60 would be like a 90, right? So instead of, this would be a 99% on the ACT. In school, 55 out of 60 on a math test would be like a low A minus. But even better than that, what I recognized was that if you come down here to this past three, and you actually leave five questions blank to guess, so you just find the 55 questions that you know how to do, 55 questions that you know how to do, You've now taken five, the, the, let's say five to 10 minutes that you would have spent on those five hard questions that you decide not to answer. Or let's see, let's even better, yeah, let's, let's, say, uh, let's say you get 52 right. Let's say you get 52 out of 60, right? But you leave eight questions blank. Okay, you leave eight questions blank. But you've been accurate on all of those 52 questions. And the reason you know you're accurate is because you've taken that extra time that you were going to spend, that time you were going to spend on these eight hard questions, right? You take whatever, 10 minutes, but at least 10 to 15 minutes on those eight hard questions, you apply to guarantee accuracy on these 52, and you just don't answer these eight until you get to the guessing stuff at the end. And if you guess the same letter down on those eight questions using that guessing technique from one of those videos, you're going to add two or three questions to your score. Now, again, being a great test taker, Okay, being a great test taker is not everyone could, this, this is the biggest difference between what I was able to do by, by luck of just always trying to get to the minimum. If you recognize this and you apply this, you will do well. That is just a fact and I know that because I didn't do that well in school but I could do well on these tests because I knew that a 52, really, right, 52 which is a B in school, a 52 on a test like this with this guessing would probably result in 55 if you if you recognize the guessing technique. Okay, if you were accurate on 52 questions, it's pretty easy to see what the guessing technique is. And again, let me take you guys down to this uh, the score report here. Okay, so I knew as a kid if I got 52 questions right on any given test. Come on, you guys can see I was explaining this in another video to somebody. Okay, look at this. If I got 52 questions right, at a minimum, I had to trust myself. I, did, I didn't need to listen to everybody else, but look at this, 52, right? And then I guessed, I took all the extra time, 10 to 15 minutes on those eight hard problems that I didn't probably know how to answer anyway. I leave them blank and then I guess, and at minimum, because I'm gonna get two of those questions right guaranteed, if you use the guessing technique, a thousand percent out of a thousand percent of the time, you're gonna get two, at least two of those right out of the eight. And in more likely, you're gonna probably get three right 
And look at this. By answering 52 questions right, which would be a B in school, you're now at a 99%. A 34 is in the top 1%, you're in the 99th percentile. And so again, your ability to recognize how to do the bare minimum, but to be as accurate as possible on the questions that you do know how to do, particularly on the math section, because it is an order of difficulty, will, will do wonders for your math score. Yeah, so, so, so the, the, the question here, not, uh, so, uh, from my strategy for math, having 40 minutes left for the last 30, as long as you're able to be accurate on those first 30 questions, so I, I implore you to go back on any test and look to see if you were 100% accurate, you were 30 out of 30 on all of the first 30 questions. Because one of the things that happens, and, and it, it, it drives me crazy, because I used to work for a company, one of the bigger companies that was like, spend 20 minutes on the, 20 minutes on the first 30, 20 minutes on the second 20, and 20 minutes on the last 10. That, that doesn't make any sense because every question is worth the same amount of points. When I, and this is part of the reason why I, I don't work for these companies anymore. Is like, at some point I was like, what, what, are, we, you know, what are we teaching in this, in this way? Every question is worth the same amount of points. So the best test takers in the world will find the 50 questions, no matter where they come up on the test. You find the 50 and 52 questions that you absolutely know how to answer. And then you just leave the other eight and you guess right down. And guess what? That's hard to do psychologically. Because if you guess the same letter down, all the way down, you know that you're going to miss some of those questions. I'm under no illusion that I'm going to get all eight of those questions right when I have to start guessing. But I'm pretty confident that I'm going to get, right, I can get three, two or three additional questions, right? And yeah, I get a 33 or 34 on the test. If I've done really well on the three other much easier sections, these three, if I've gotten 35 and 36 on those three, then at minimum I'm going to get a 34 on this exam, and probably closer to 35, 36. Right? If you get a 34 on math and a 36 on the other three sections, you still get a 36 overall. So again, don't don't. Um, if you want to get through the first 30 questions and you can do it in in, in 20 minutes, that's awesome, and that, that just means you're a great math student. So that's, don't don't let me discount that at all. But if you go back to any of your other previous tests and you recognize that you missed simple mistakes in the first 30, those questions, there's absolutely no reason on a test like this to challenge yourself on hard questions because unlike in school, those questions aren't worth any amount, any more points than the easy ones. that Number one is worth the same amount of points as number 60. So number one is infinitely more important on the math test than number 60 is because one is so easy but it's worth the same amount of points. Does that all make sense, guys? Can everybody give me a thumbs up if, if that idea makes sense? Again, how you want to approach the math test and your personal strategy for the math test can be can vary. And I encourage you guys not to listen. One of my biggest advantages as a kid, and even when we look on like like we'll have to, we'll have some of our tutors and teachers who post on Reddit sometimes, and then they'll they'll tell me about certain posts and stuff. And it's like a lot of these tutors and teachers, and I used to feel this way when I worked at other companies. They they act like there's only one method. The best advantage I had as a kid was that I didn't really listen to anybody, which is a problem in a lot of areas of my life, but one area that it was great was on a test like this, because if somebody told me to do something, I'd probably do it the other way. And, and so I encourage you guys to take what I'm saying, to, to learn from what I'm trying to tell you, and then to apply it to your own method. And if that happens to mirror really closely what I'm doing, then great. And I love that, and, that, and that's why we're doing these videos. But if it doesn't, it, it, find your own strategy. If you get a 36 using completely different strategies than I, it's crazy to me. One time we had a we had a tutor at a at a company that I worked for who was like who got who tried to a student had gotten a thirty five or thirty six on a practice test using a different method on the reading test or on the science test than than we had taught at the thing. And I'm like, and the guy there was a teacher or tutor there that was like questioning that student. I'm like, dude, let's see you get a let's see the teacher get a thirty six. Let's prove that you can do it before you start criticizing somebody that just did it. It's insane to me that that started to come up. Right, that that idea thought that that somebody would think that I would know more than you guys do. Take take what I know because what I just said about the how the grading system works. That's a fact. That's just definitive. That that you can't argue with that. But the way that I'm teaching these strategies or telling you guys these strategies is not set in stone. So take. If, I'm sure there's a better strategy out there. I'm sure somebody could come up with a better strategy than what I'm telling you guys to do today. But the understanding of how the scale works and, and how to approach this exam and not to put a lot of pressure on yourself is a good start. And then you guys can mold it to the, to the way that you guys see fit. But, but again, it just it drives me crazy when we see, when I hear things that are posted on Reddit or posted on, on YouTube channels or whatever about this test, or even if I hear it from parents where, where there's, some critic, there's something critical about getting a 35. Like if you get a 35 in the top 0.5% of all students that take this exam, 
Don't listen to me, right? Mute me. Don't listen to anything I have to say if you're getting a 35 right now. Okay, but if you're not, take what we've learned tonight, take what we've talked about tonight, and, and try to apply it to your own strategy and just knock it out of the park on Saturday or knock it out of the park on, in July when you take the exam then. Right? Just, just uh, I can't stress enough, enough how, how great it makes me feel when I see students that put in the work and put in the effort, and then they do really well. And it happens a lot when we have those types of students. I, I like, this is going to sound critical, but I love those students way more than the student that just comes in and is, you know, that does well on the first test and then just comes in without the homework being done. It's like, I'm sure I used to do that as a kid. And even thinking back, I, it annoys me to think about myself in that position because I'm sure I did it. But I can tell you from a teacher's perspective how annoying that is. So if you have great work ethic right now and you're, and you're putting in the time and you're listening to what I have to say, because a lot of it is factually based. It's just having looked at these tests for so long. I never thought I'd say that when I was 16 years old. But eventually, you see enough of this stuff, and I, and I probably know more about the test structure and format than maybe anybody in the country just from having looked at this so much. And, but it doesn't mean my strategy is going to work for you. It does mean that the stuff that I'm communicating from a fact and a scoring basis, that is true. And then take that and use it to your own strategy. You guys will absolutely knock it out of the park on, on Saturday or whenever it is you take the next test. I promise. And it'll take a lot of pressure off of you if, if you develop your own strategy because then you're not like, oh, am I really going to try this? Did, does Chase kind of seems like he's full of it. Like, I'm going to really try this on this test. This doesn't make me feel very comfortable, but I'm going to do it. That's going to put more pressure on you to do something that I want you to do. Ultimately, it has to come to you and, and you taking that pressure off yourself. And then guess what? This content is, is eighth grade reading level for the reading test, sixth grade grammar for the English test, science. I don't know anything about science, but I can still do well in the science section. And math, like I said, math is the one hard, really hard section on the ACT. But you, you can do, like if you get 34s on the other three sections, you, unless you get a 19 on the math, you still get like a 32 overall. So, so you know, again, use this to the best of your ability. And, and again, you guys will just absolutely knock it out of the park. There's no question in my mind. And, and you guys are, the work ethic to be putting this time in now and, and to be doing what you guys are doing, no matter what time it is, wherever you guys are in the world, uh, I encourage you guys to just keep working. Keep working hard. It'll pay off, whether it be on this ACT, the next ACT, or sometime down the road. I learned to work hard too late in life, and now I'm playing catch-up. You guys are doing an unbelievable job doing that right now, being here right now at this time and, and working hard. So keep it up. Uh, any other questions, guys? That was a long rant there. Felt like it was a long monologue. A Shakespeare, it was like a Shakespearean monologue, except using a bunch of incorrect grammar and slang and not old English, but but uh, it was an ACT monologue for, for you guys, and, and hopefully you guys got something out of that. Uh, and again, just uh, yeah, just let me know if you guys have any additional questions. I'll, I'll hang out here and, and wait for any to come in. That's really all I have to say about the math test. Oh wait, one last thing, sorry guys, just kidding. One thing about the math test that I'd recommend you guys do is I would recommend, um, so I, I, I can do one of these real quick for you just to show you. One of the things I encourage our students to do is to time themselves using this three pass method. So let me just show you real quick how I would take, how I would practice for the math test. Um, okay, so I'm gonna set the timer here for 10 minutes in the background. You guys will see this come up here in just a second. Okay, so if you guys see this math test in the background, you guys will see 10 minutes. So one of the things I would recommend you guys do in order to practice is to figure out how much how much time you're banking every 10 questions and while you're skipping hard questions. Again, I've said this in other videos that I don't like to do word problems first. I just feel like it, it doesn't give me the warm up that I need. If I do all of the easy problems that are really easy conceptually, if I do all of those first and then I come back to the word problems, I know question number one is not gonna be very hard. But it looks hard and daunting right when I start the test having to read through that and it's a mixture and a casserole, whatever they're talking about. right? If I start a question like number three, even looking at three right here, I know how much easier that's going to be. And so if I go through this on this first pass, I'll show you what it looks like. And then you, you set the timer for 10 minutes, which is about how much time you get per 10 questions. And at the end of the 10 questions, stop the timer and see how much time you have left through those 10 questions. Okay, so I'll, I'll demonstrate that, but I think it's a really easy way to practice. Okay, so 10 minutes here, and uh, I'm gonna get my calculator. Okay, 10 minutes, and our time starts now. Oops, time starts now. 
Okay, so like I said, two, one and two look too much for me right off the bat, so I'm gonna start with number three. Three is so easy, right? If I'm looking at this, three is so easy. If the bases are the same, two x plus seven, you can just set the exponents equal to each other. Two x is equal to eight. Try to write out everything that you're, you're doing because it will you'll help you avoid simple mistakes. X equals four. That took 20 seconds. Okay, same thing with the next one. Let the function uh, f be defined by f of x is equal to this. What is f of three? So when x is three, right? So we just say f of three, plug in three for all the x values, three squared minus, whoops, seven times 12 plus three. I just did the math real quick on that one. So you get 45 minus seven times 15. 45 minus 105 is equal to negative 60, that's j. Okay, so there's two questions down. Let's keep going. Uh, question five, again, wallet containing $5 bills. Those are those ones that are just so brutal to try to answer early. Whereas like number seven, that's a figure. Six looked like a word problem too. Six, right, number seven, the parallelogram AC is a diagonal and the measure of ABC is 40 degrees. The measure of ACD is 50 degrees. So if we know just basic parallelogram, we know that this is 40 degrees then, and now we form a triangle. Opposite angles of a parallelogram are equal. So we just do 180 minus 57 minus 40, and we get what, 127, uh, 83? Is that right? No, wait, that's uh, what, 97, yeah, 83. That's D. Okay, let's keep going. Let's see how many more of these we can answer. Yeah, like look how easy number eight is. When x equals one half, right? When x equals one half, we plug this in. So we get four minus three divided by one half. One over one half. When dividing by one half, it's like multiplying by two, right? Flip the second number and multiply. The answer is G. Number nine, in the standard Y coordinate plane, where's the midpoint? So guys, if you don't even remember the midpoint formula, don't worry. Don't think to yourself, oh my God, why didn't I memorize that midpoint formula? The midpoint is just based on a graph. Just graph it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, somewhere up here, right? And then we do one, negative four. So it's like uh, one, negative four. What you guys will notice is that the midpoint of this graph right here, the only, the only value that it could possibly be is x equals two, right? This is two, the x-axis here. X has to equal two, and you look at the answer choices, there's only one x equals two, okay? And let's go to, I like, I like the ones that give us figures. So it says the fluctuation of water depth and appears shown in the figure below. One of the following values gives a positive difference in feet between the greatest water depth and the least water depth shown in the graph. That's a word problem, but because they give us a figure, I'll probably, I'd probably like to do it. So the water depth in feet up here is at 12, it looks like, and the lowest is here at six, right? So uh, one of the following values gives the positive difference between the greatest water depth and, and the least water depth. I think it's just six, right? 12 to six. So it's G, and now I'll stop my time. So this is a way that you guys can practice. I hope all those ones are right. If, you, if there were any that were wrong, please correct me. It was just a simple mistake, so I promise I wasn't. But look, guys, now after going through this, if I just find the easiest questions, we answered six out of 10 there. We answered six out of 10, correct. And this is what I would write down. This is what we have our students write down that are in our classes. Six out of 10, correct, right? Four out of 10 omitted. But look how much time I have left. I know exactly where I'm gonna be. I'm at six, I was at 6.55 in terms of banked time. And now I know that despite answer, despite only having four questions left, I've essentially added three minutes onto my time that I can use anywhere. It doesn't have to be on those early questions. I could use that three minutes on harder questions at the end, knowing that I have some easy ones to come back to when I go back to that pass too. Again, it's just a method. That might be an extreme example because there probably are some easy ones of the four that we skipped. There probably was a really easy one in there, but it, but it works for me and it has worked and, and it just allows you, particularly if you don't have a strong work ethic, because if anybody watched that A11 video, like I didn't memorize the kite formula. I'm sure I should have. I know I should have because I know we keep it in our own books. I'm sure many of our own tutors and teachers know the kite formula. I'm sure I was supposed to memorize it at some point working for a previous company and I just didn't memorize it but I didn't know it at the time so I just skipped it. I didn't beat myself up about it being like, oh, I don't remember the kite formula. Right? You just move on in the time and you, you just you live, with, you, know, you live with your mistakes and you still try to maximize your score in the moment. So yeah, guys, that's how I would prepare for the math test. Again, I don't know if that's going to help you guys in time for the June test in a couple days. Uh, but if it does, I think there are certain strategies, certainly within this video so far, that you guys can definitely implement in three days. Uh, if you just, you know, if you just work hard and put in the time. Uh, and yeah, so that's, that's really all I have, guys. If you guys have any questions, let me know now. 
Um, otherwise, I encourage you guys, we're going to have that reading video. Don't forget that we have a, uh, that ACT reading, comprehensive reading review tomorrow night. So if you're struggling with the reading test at all, uh, we're going to be much more in-depth on that one than we were tonight uh, on, the, uh, on the reading section. So if you're struggling with reading, definitely, definitely attend that. And then finally, for those that did have their June test canceled, uh, we will on, on uh, Saturday morning at 8.45 a.m. U.S. Pacific time, we'll be pro virtually proctoring a full practice test. So you guys can find that on our YouTube channel. Uh, and as long as you guys just join in on the live stream, I'll explain exactly how it will work and we'll try to simulate it as much as we can uh, given all these crazy circumstances. And, and uh, yeah, you guys, will, you guys will do great. Yeah, bubbling answers to save time, it's tricky. I mean, you know, the way that we explained it, and we've gotten some comments on previous videos of like, well, you didn't have to bubble in your answers. That's why you had more time at the end. At the same time, in some of the videos we've done in the past, I was also talking a lot out loud. I mean, if I was really taking it, I'd have my head down and not try to explain anything. I, I honestly, when I take the test, I just go back and forth. I bubble it. Some students like to uh, like to save it all till the end and just do it all on their sheet. I, I think that's probably the most efficient way to do it is to save all the bubbles to the end. For me personally, I just get a little nervous that I'm going to run out of time. So that's why I, like, I'm not going to time it well enough and, and I'm going to screw something up with that. So I just bubble in as I go. And, and if you do that, if you bubble in as you go, it will, uh, it will be really effective for the guessing strategy at the end. So uh, by the way, I'll post that guys. If anybody has any questions on that, um, let me just post the link to this guessing video. Uh, how to be a great guesser. I know you guys probably like, there's a way to guess well. There is, if you can believe it, there is a way to guess well based on what we've seen from the ACT. So being a good ACT guesser. It's right there, so I just posted that in the comment section. I encourage you guys to check that out. I mean, it can definitely be really helpful. Uh, and you guys have seen me use it in the videos. If you've watched any of our previous videos of me taking the practice test, I definitely use it. And I use it, I, you know, I've hopefully mastered it at this point, but uh, I try to use it as well as I can, as effectively as I can, and it definitely, definitely gets me a couple points uh, at, the end of, at the end of the exam. Helps me stay cal calm too. It's basically what we discussed in that math, uh, talking about the math stuff at the beginning, which is like if you get 52 right and you could be a great guesser, then you only need to get 52 right and you can still get a 34 on the exam. Right? I mean, that's... Again, if you watch the video, let me just show you real quick how this works, just briefly. Uh, but watch the video to, to describe how you can you can obtain the right. Well, look at this, guys. Like if I if I on these last, this is a great example of it. Come on. Okay, so if, if I look at these last ten questions, and you guys can see, or last eight, right? I said I, I'd be looking at the last eight questions. Okay, so if I look at these last eight questions, on this is the seventy four F test again. If, if I effectively use that guessing technique from the video and I guess F and A, right, it's based on answer columns and A and F are, are the same answer column. If I guess this letter all the way down at the end of the test, and let's just theoretically say the last eight questions that were the ones that I had to skip, it will work no matter where you skip the questions, but let's say they are the last eight just for time's sake right now. If I, if I, whoops, sorry, I would have gotten 52 right, so forget about this last one. But I'm at fi question number 53, I'm going to guess from 53 to 60. If I guess A and F all the way down, there's your three questions. Okay, so if I answer 52 questions right, and I know because I'm accurate, 52 out of 60, and I know because I'm accurate, and then I memorize how to do it, I effectively practice this guessing technique. It will work every time. It won't always be that you'll get three right, but will 1,000% of the time be at least two on the yeah, two out of uh, out of eight for the for the math section. So at, at minimum, if I answer what would be the equivalent of a B's worth of questions in school, I'm going to end up with a 33, which is in the top 1.5% or 34. Actually, for the math section, a 33 is in the top 1% as well. Overall, it's in like the top 1.5% for the composite score, but yeah, you'd be in the top 1% by answering a B's worth of questions uh, when compared to like a school test. So yeah, I mean, again, guys, these are just the, the, the scale and understanding that those are just factually based. And, and then I encourage you to find your own strategy that works well or that makes you feel as confident and as pressure-free, anxiety-free as possible. But the more you can understand about the scale and how this test works and how to be a great test taker, I know how much that helped me when I was a kid. And I know how much we communicate and how much it's helped students in the past from our programs or have watched our videos. 
So I highly encourage you guys to do that. I highly encourage you guys. Uh, and we also have another video that goes through this scale pretty in depth. So check that out on the channel as well. But in any case, guys, it looks like everybody is good with questions. I hope you guys all have a, have a great rest of your week. Uh, uh, stay healthy, stay safe with everything going on right now. Um, and yeah, if you guys are taking the test on Saturday, good luck. I'll be posting the five essential items that I've ready the night before the ACT test. I'll post those on Friday. Uh, and then we have the reading review tomorrow if anybody wants to participate in that. So that'll be same time, but, but it'll only be an hour. Uh, and yeah, guys, I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. I hope you have a great weekend, even if you're not taking the test. And I hope to see some of you guys on Saturday for our, for our virtual proctored practice test. Okay, guys, so great job tonight. Have a great, uh, like I said, have a great rest of your week. And yeah, we'll see you guys soon in, in some capacity, hopefully. All right, guys, signing off. See ya.